Kind of five and six. So this is our fourth lesson of English this week. And today we are learning to evaluate and edit our work. So if you get your bit of paper in front of you, I want you to, I'm going to read you these questions. I'd like you to answer them. So it's what is editing? Why do we edit? What do we edit? How do we edit? And what does evaluate mean? So if you pause the video and give yourself a few minutes to answer those questions. Okay, so obviously we know how important editing is as part of the writing process. But you get all your thoughts down, you get your sentences in place, and then you can go back and make improvements. And as we always discuss in class, it's much easier to edit the next day or a good few hours later and look at it with fresh eyes, because often it's very difficult to edit certain parts of your own work because you read what you think you've written, not necessarily what you have written. So obviously editing is that process of improvement and fixing errors. So why do we edit? Again, as we just said, to make sure our writing, we can fix anything that's incorrect. And obviously it can also be um, as good as we can make it. So what do we edit? Now we know that we always edit our basics, so spelling, punctuation, things like that. And then also we look to edit and to improve the work is edit the vocabulary choices and maybe structure of sentences. So how do we edit? Now that's a bit of a tricky question. And basically, as we know, we do it in a process. So we don't try and fix everything at once, we do it step by step. And that's what we're gonna be going through today. And the last one, what does evaluate mean? So evaluation is part of a lot of processes where at the very end, you look at what's worked well and maybe what didn't work as well. So for next time, you know what you might need to take care with. So here is our editing process. So when you start your activity in a little bit, this is what you can keep referring back to to check that you're doing the right thing. So first of all, in blue, you can see this is editing our basics. So that's our punctuation, our spellings, missed out on repeated words. So I'm going to model like I normally would how we edit on a piece of my work. And then you're going to have a go with yours. So I have got here a copy of the poem Silver, but I've put some errors in on purpose so we can edit them together. Now, the first thing we said is punctuation. Now, in the last session, I asked you for each line, you will do a comma at the end of the first line and a full stop at the end. So when you first edit your punctuation, you're not even reading your writing. You're just checking you've got that in place. So you will go to the end of each line and see, oh, here we go. I need to add a comma in here. Then I've got full stop, comma, full stop. Oh, now this should be a comma. Got full stop, comma, missed one out here, full stop, comma, full stop, comma, full stop, comma, and the last full stop I've missed out. Now, as I'm doing that, you might have noticed other errors in my work, but remember, we do it one at a time, we can make sure we get things in place. I am then going to check that beginning of each of my line, I have begun with a capital letter. So, capital, I'm just going down, scanning down, I'm not reading it, I'm just checking. You can see I've got all my capital letters in the right place. Then I'm going to scan through my work and check that I have not put any capitals in random places throughout because we know that capital letters in the middle of a sentence should only be for a proper noun, which is the name of a particular place or person, remember? So I'm just going to scan through. Remember, I'm not reading it yet. I'm just scanning. And I have not got any covered letters where they shouldn't be. So if we go back to the previous slide, then it's spelling. Now remember, when we check our spelling, because we're not reading for content yet, we're just looking at spelling, we always read from the end and backwards. So we can just look at individual words without worrying about anything else at this point. So obviously, one of the things of spelling as well is checking your homophones are correct. So you've got the correct there or where, and also the correct spelling of maybe certain digraphs or trigraphs, like E sounds, A sounds, and spellings in general. So I'm just going to go along, I'm looking from the back, oh, and here I've noticed I've use the wrong e sound in gleam so if you're not sure of these remember because at year five and six level we're already very good readers often when you look at a word you will feel it doesn't quite look right and that is when you can then use a dictionary or an adult if there's an adult to support you to check that word so remember i'm looking at the back and here oh this word is clause and i've used the incorrect or sound i'm going to change it to aw another one here now notice a lot of times we miss out sounds in the middle of words um, particularly suffixes. So for scampering, my air sound in the middle, scampering, I just put the er instead of the er. I'm going to keep reading it backwards. Now here, I've got the word catch. Now if I sound out catch, catch seems correct, but if I look at thatch, remember I can think of, hang on, this has got to have 
the sound here has got the letter T in it as well. Oh, it's just missed a double letter out here in trees. So remember, sometimes when we're just trying to get our ideas down, we do sometimes drop a few, um, we make some spelling errors, sorry. So that's why it's always important to even edit for your basics. Okay, so I've done that. So I'll go back. Next is missed out or repeated words. So this is where now you can read it. But remember, you're just looking for missed out repeated words, not the content too much at this point. You can also do this by skimming and scanning because sometimes you can notice it that way. So I'm going to have a little read. Oh, and I can see here I've got two of the same words. And I read it out loud. One by one, the, the casements catch. So I can tell that's definitely an error and I will get rid of it. Also, you might realise that you've missed out a word as well. It doesn't quite make sense. So you can have a go at now. If you edit your punctuation spellings, missed out repeated words. If you pause the video and edit that bit first, off you go. Okay, so next, we are looking more at the structure specific to a text. Now, this is different depending on what you're writing, and obviously we are writing a poem. Now, we are going to check it makes sense. And obviously with poetry, we know that when we talked about in lesson one, um, authors can take a bit of artistic license, and obviously in a poem, we noticed there was a nonsense word, tune. So if you've obviously chosen something that isn't a real word that fits with your poem, that's fine. But we're checking it actually makes sense just grammatically in the sentence structure. So also rhyming words in the correct place and eight syllables on each line. So if we go back, you would have a little look. You would read it through and check it makes sense if someone else was reading it. You would then go through, I'm going to check my rhyming words. I've got moon, tune, these trees, catch that. You can check you've got them in the correct place. They're always at the end of a line. And the last one, sorry, was eight syllables. Now, obviously, that is one of the trickiest parts about writing a poem. If you're trying to keep that rhythm and that pace, and we chose to do eight syllables, if you chose a different number of syllables, that's absolutely fine. And in a minute, if you don't have eight syllables in a line, when we look at the next section of editing, you might be able to fit it in there. But you might just want to circle or make a note on yours where you've got to look at the syllables if you've counted them or clapped them and they're not quite eight. So I'd like you to pause the video now and have a go at those next three things. Does it make sense? Rhyming words in the correct place and eight syllables on each line. So now we're down to what is probably the hardest part of editing. This is something we've done in school, remember, but it is the trickiest part because it's actually improving what you've written. Now, the ways we can improve, particularly for a poem, you might swap a word. So maybe you read it and think, actually, I've got a better word now. That sounds a little bit better. That's particularly adjectives or adverbs. Now, remember, if we look to the poem again, adjectives describe a noun and adjective, adverbs, sorry, describe a verb. If you find a noun, so obviously here, a lot of the adjective we use is the adjective silver. So obviously, when you talk about colours, they are nouns and they have a colour, but they can be used in an adjective, which is in front of a noun. So here, the colour silver has been used as an adjective. We've got silvery thatch, um, shadowy coat, and things like that. So if you want to have a look, you can always look at them and improve them. Also, you'll notice in the original poem, the word, the word scampering was used. So you might go through and have chosen verbs that you would like to improve because verbs are quite an easy one to sometimes find a better verb for it. You might like to then add or change figurative language. So you might have used a metaphor, a simile, alliteration or personification that either you think maybe could be tweaked a little bit to make better. Or maybe when you've read it today, you think, oh, I'm not quite sure about that. You might want to swap it completely. Or you might read through when you've not used any of those forms of um, figurative language. So if you've not got a simile, an adjective, um, simile, a metaphor, personification, try and have a go at swapping one of your lines or adding a line. See if you can get one in. At the end here, I've put add or remove a line. Sometimes when you read your poem again, you might decide that there's maybe a line in it or a rhyming couplet that you just don't like. And actually, if you remove it, the poem sounds better or flows better. Or you might think, actually, this doesn't quite seem finished. Because if we go back to the original poem, obviously, the author chose here, they introduced it by talking about the fact that it's a moon in general. They talked about then everything the moon is shining its light on. And that's how it ends. You might feel like this poem didn't quite end and you wanted to talk about something in hours about golden. You could always end yours with something of a transition, as obviously the sun then sets at the end of the day, which I think would work very, very well. So if you didn't do that yesterday, you could always add that today as another improvement. So your next task, which is a tricky one, I would like you to have a go at improving it and have a look back at these to see if there are any ways you can do it.
Okay, so hopefully you've edited and improved your poem and you're quite happy with your final product and that's what you can email me, remember. Now, the last thing is evaluate. So I want you to just think in general, you know, what is it you really like about your poem? What did you either struggle with or think maybe is something you could work on another time? So have a little think. So actually next time we come to the unit on poetry, that is something that you can think about as you're writing that. So the next task is to copy up. Because as we know, once you've edited, um, you then, there's obviously lots of bits of writing and things on your page, and sometimes you can't always read your final piece of work. So what I'd like you to do, and there's paper to download on our website, remember, you can copy up your poem in your obviously neatest handwriting with all the edited bits on. Because obviously you should have edited if you had, if possible, in a different colour, because that's what we would do in school. And you can copy that up and have it obviously set out beautifully. You can also illustrate your poem if you would like. And then that's what you can send to me, and I can't wait to read some of them. Now, tomorrow's lesson is a comprehension lesson, so there is not a video for that one. But if you go on the class page, it's obviously got the instructions for comprehension that we always talk to at the beginning of any comprehension lesson in English. So, you know, the usual about reading the text, underlining keywords, looking back for answers, copying accurately. So make sure you have a little look at that on the class website to make sure you're doing that comprehension to your best possible ability. And I'll see you all soon. Bye.